Here's an interesting concept from quantum mechanics. It's called quantum entanglement. So what would happen if uh, you had two quantum states, each characterized by their own wave function? Suppose they became mixed up or they became entangled. Uh, typically this is done, it's actually done by taking two photons of correlated polarization, like polarized up or down. It turns out that measurement of one state of entangled cis uh, pair determines the outcome of the measurement of the other state. Well, what does this mean? Well, suppose that uh, somehow you create a system in which, uh, say, this is polarized or spin up and this is polarized or spin down. If you create a system of two photons, let's say they're photons, and the wave functions are somehow uh, entangled. That is to say that the uh, wave function of, say, this is called photon 1, photon 2, the wave function of photon 1 is some combination, uh, let's say C11 times the wave function of, say, the up state plus uh, C12 times the wave function of the down state. And similarly, the wave function for uh, photon 2 will be some combination <clears throat> of the up plus some combination of the down, where these up and down represents um, the up state and the down state. In other words, if you have photon 1, which has up, it'll contain the uh, its own wave function with the up state, but it will be mixed in with um, some of the down of photon 2. And certainly photon 2 will have its down state, but also will have an up state based on there. So you might say this would be um, New York City down state and the up state would be, say, Binghamton. All right, so let's, uh, what happens if you measure a uh, photon 1, say up, this implies that photon 2 must be uh, down. Or if you measure photon 1 being down, this implies photon 2 must be up. Okay, so measurement of 1 automatically determines what the measurement is of the other. So it has to be either up or down. If you measure 1, photon 1, then you automatically determine what the measurement on photon 2 will be. All right, well, that why is that interesting? Well, suppose you take the wave, uh, this uh, system, two electrons or two photons, we're talking about two photons, and now you physically separate them. So over here, say, is photon 1, which can either be up or down, and physically separate them over here now. This could be, say, on Earth, and this could be, say, on Mars. You physically separate these. And this could be photon up or down, depending upon what these coefficients are. If you measure this to be up, instantaneously, instantaneously this is determined to be down. So anybody who measures this will measure it down. So by measuring this photon and collapsing the wave uh, function along one particular eigenfunction, you automatically collapse the wave function on the other instantaneously by going down. Now you're going to say, well, what about Einstein's uh, theory of relativity, which says that uh, you can't go faster than the speed of light. That's true, but Einstein's theory of relativity is primarily for particles, and this is not necessarily particles. The particles have already been separated, presumably at less than speed of light. This is information. So if you know information about this, you automatically and instantaneously know information about this. So that's quantum, uh, that's what's interesting about quantum entanglement. You know, separate these two entangled uh, wave functions. Measurement of one instantaneously determines measurement of the other. Now you're probably saying, well, yeah, that's interesting. That's just purely a quantum mechanical effect, et cetera, et cetera. But 
This is an article published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, not too shabby a journal. This was published uh, last year. And quantum teleportation between remote atomic ensemble quantum memories. All right, so another name for this, a little sort of catchy name that you can use in the popular press is quantum teleportation. You know this, so somehow you teleported this to be over here. All right, well, and here it is. And what they've actually done is instantaneously sent information uh, over 150 meters of optical fiber. So if you measure something at one place, 150 meters away, instantaneously you know what the uh, value of that measurement will be. Um, so that's interesting. It actually works. Quantum mechanic teleportation uh, actually does work. Another interesting uh, idea of this sort of entanglement of different things is what is, uh, comes into account in quantum computing. Maybe you've heard of quantum uh, quantum computers. Let's look at a classical computer. And let's say it's three bits. And so now you can say, all right, uh, three bits, you have two to the eighth possible states. Uh, what am I saying? Two to the eighth. <laughs> yeah, two to the third, sorry. Two to the third possible state. And let's say uh, you can have, let's use zero and one, zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 one. So did I miss one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, I missed one zero and then one, one, one. So a classic computer can be in only one of these states. All right, so you have like a memory, for example, or a register in a CPU. It could be only either one of these states at a time. On the other hand, if you have, say, let's represent these zeros and ones by just what we had before, polarizations of photons, then what you can do is have, for a quantum computer, where these are called three bits. In quantum computers, you call them qubits, Q-U-B-I-T-S. Quantum bits are qubits. Uh, so you have, say, three photons that can be either in the up or down polarization. You will have eight possible systems or eight possible states, but you can uh, simultaneously uh, represent all eight of these possibilities, all eight states, because of quantum entanglement. Just like here, you had two states, uh, so the wave function of one of them is there, and you can combine these. Same way here, you can simultaneously represent them. So instead of a computer just having one or the other, just one at a time, here, because of quantum entanglement, you can have all eight states represented at once. Now you're probably thinking, oh yeah, that's interesting, but it'll never work. In fact, <laughs> here it is, D-Wave, the quantum computer company. There's a company, D-Wave, that actually makes quantum computers. They're making now the latest, their latest model is a 512 uh, qubit computer. So 512 qubits, that means you have two to the 512 possible states that can be represented simultaneously. Can you try to have like a 512-bit computer? That's a huge number of states and you'd have like, a, have to have a huge amount of memory to represent that and so on. But in a quantum computer, all you have to do is have 512 qubits and you can represent two to the 512 different states simultaneously and 
it works. Uh, this is being uh, Google actually just bought one of these to figure out how to use it uh, to make more money in their search engine. And I'm sure the National Security Agency has uh, several of them that are uh, probably being used right now to figure out how to uh, break all uh, uh, encryption codes that exist on Earth. All right, so that's an interesting uh, sort of sidelight of um, quantum mechanics. Hope you enjoyed that.